my, what a scandalous chess situation. While Skirt is like, I'm innocent, no Monroe, oops moment. I have your panties covered. To make this dress, all you need is a sewing machine. And some supplies. And a pattern. If you wish, you can buy mine on Etsy store. Some discreet advertising right here. And I'm having a launch sale. So discreet. If you are a new sewer, you most likely don't own one of those fancy surging overlooking machines yet. But if you have, feel free to use one. It will save you lots of time. So, what exactly do you need to make this dress, you may ask? Lightweight non-stretchy fabric. And despite my own recommendations, I picked up stretchy linen. I knew it was an awful idea, but I just loved the pattern. And unsurprisingly, some serious issues, if you will, had been revealed. Because the body stretches as well as the shirt back, my nipples, just like unruly teenagers would try to sneak out for a breath of fresh air. So I had to attach to the bodies a few strips of fabric to prevent the stretching. Save your time and dignity for this matter. Use a non-stretchy fabric. You will also need fusible interfacing. You want to match the weight and properties of interfacing and main fabric. Fusible stay tape. I cut mine out of the main interfacing. Bias binding. Elastic. One invisible zipper. One spool of a matching thread. You will need four more if using a serger. Elastic thread. I'm using Madeira elastic. Optional underwire channeling. Underwires and or foam cups. Hooks. Stitch length two to three. The more the fabric frays, the shorter the stitch. I laid out all my pattern pieces flat on the floor from zipper to zipper. And tip of the day. Keep everything organized, so you know exactly what goes where. Fully interface main cups and straps. Use fusible stay tape to interface along the top edge of the bodice and along the zipper. Make the interfacing an inch longer than the zipper. Extra inch down the waist won't do any harm, if you know what I mean. To apply the interfacing. Wrong side of the fabric. Put interfacing down, rough side down. Cover with cotton cloth and press. Don't glide. Avoid steam. Hold it still for a few seconds for it to stick. Turn it over and press again. Oh, <laughs> there is some magic going on. <laughs> okay, back to work. Turn it over and press again. Put aside to cool down. And now that everything is prepared, we can start sewing. Fold the strap in half, pin and stitch along one short and long edge. One short edge stays raw. Always backstitch at the beginning and end, unless specified otherwise. To keep the corners sharp like Sheldon Cooper's mind, go to the edge, reverse one stitch, one forward, Rotate 90 degrees. One forward. Back. And all the way down. Clip the corners like you chopped your very first bank in the bathroom and trim the seam allowances using a dressmaker or pinking shears. Chop off the seam allowance by the raw edge as well. To turn the straps right side out, pinch the fabric to make sure everything is real. And yes, you are really doing a great job. Pick a prolonged, smooth object with a rounded head. Scissors are too sharp and can rip the corners. A pencil is long enough, smooth and has a rounded head, so you can use that. Or... Jack, I think I could use your tool! <laughs> 
<clears throat> and one an appropriate joke later. Turn the strap inside out. I push it through the top and guide all the way down. Slightly roll the seam towards the back and press. The wrong side is where the seam is. And right side is clean and sharp looking. And the last thing left is to top stitch the raw edge just to hold it together. At least the straps have it together. And now we are moving to the area that overshadows the mirror of the soul. You have fully lined cups. Pin two bottom cups at the notches and stitch. Chop the corners, align the upper cup at notches. Pin and stitch done looks good the journey into dressmaking is off to a solid start trim the seam allowances and repeat three more times to assemble a boob holder pin the upper cup at the notches align the raw edge of the strap with the pinned area Bear in mind, the long edge is facing the center, the short is towards the side, and the wrong side is facing you. And pin. Sandwich the oversized spaghetti strap between the front cup and lining, and stitch. Make sure to stop the strap back and forth three times, so this little bastard never escapes the sandwich. Just like all the burger filling does when you try to take a bite. Press the seam allowance towards the lining. Use a blind stitch foot to top stitch. Fold and press so that the front cup rolls slightly towards the lining. Clean front, roll in the back. Trim the seam allowance. Pin the front cup and lining together to trim the excess lining. And we are done with the boob blend for now. Next, shirt bag. The large rectangle originally measures 24 cm. But once it's shared, it will shrink just like a sandwich by the afternoon. Fold the top edge once and press. Fold again at notches. And press. First fold is slightly smaller than the second one. Stitch one centimeter away from the edge. And just like that, a home for an elastic has been built. Fixing housing crisis right here. It's time to unleash the power of elastic thread. I'm using Madeira elastic. Wind the bobbin by hand. Stretch the thread ever so slightly. Place the bobbin in the bobbin case and thread the machine as you normally do. Share like this. Use the edge of the presser foot as a guide. Backstitch in the very beginning and just go straight. Stopping shortly before the edge of the fabric. Pull the presser foot up, pivot at 180 degrees, gently pull the threads, put the needle and presser foot down. So share away, my friend. Stretch the gathered fabric while sewing to hold it flat. When sharing is done, play around with it purely for your own satisfaction. Till you remember you are 30 and it's time to tie a knot. Thread a needle, pull the thread from the right side to the wrong, and tie knots at the beginning and end. Play with it a little bit more and move on. Don't forget to swap the bobbin thread. Elastic thread has done its job. Insert a safety pin through the end of the elastic and thread it through the casing. Keep the elastic a few millimeters inside, where it can hide from people's judgment. Stitch over a few times to secure it in place. 
Now steam the shirt piece and witness how it shrinks in front of your eyes just like a certain body part in cold water that I didn't record. I mean the sharing, sharing, I didn't record the sharing, yes, the sharing, the, the sewing, we're talking about sewing. Okay, done, next. Now you have an important decision to make. How are you finishing the edges? You can search, use bias binding for the waistline or French seam. If you own a serger, I highly recommend this option. Put wrong sides together, stitch on a sewing machine, press both seam allowances to one side and search. Do the same shit to all the seams. And for the waistline, you can use a bias binding. Press the bias binding in half, enclose the seams, baste and stitch close to the edge. The third option is the most complicated and time consuming. However, no serger is required. Pin wrong sides together. Yes, exactly wrong sides. The right side is facing you. Mark the notches as shown. It's important to do to reduce a bulk when seams overlap. Stitch from notch to notch. Trim in the middle. Cut at the notch. Press to one side. Flip. Pull notched bits out and press closed like a book. Stitch from edge to edge. Bear in mind, notches are required only for a French seam. But what if you want to mix and match? Let's say all seams are French seams. Whereas for the waistline you have decided to use a bias binding. Then you need notches only on the top of the bodice and the bottom of the skirt. No notches are needed at the waistline, just stitch till the end of the edge. And now when it's clear, we shall start putting a skirt and a bodice together. I will demo a French seam throughout the dressmaking process just because it's the most complicated option. Stitch from notch to notch, trim, Press to one side, pull notches out, press and stitch. Press all seams to the direction shown. Mmm, nice and clean as an apartment of a person with OCD. If any threads attempt to escape enclosed seam prison, just cut its head off. Oh my, I'm so friendly and sweet. It's time to assemble the beauty at the waistline. Cut the notch close to the stitch and open the seam allowance. Match the seams, pin wrong sides together. At the edge where the zipper goes, cut a notch on top rather than side. Stretch the shirt piece while pinning and sewing. Does it align? Let me see. Oh yeah! Love it! Cut the notch at the zipper deeper and flip over. Press and stitch. Yep, everything lined up. The seams are as straight as a cat in March. You see, that is where it gets bulky. Four layers, kiss four layers. Now there are eight of them. Enclose it all and you get 16 layers hanging together at the waistline. To avoid that, the first stitch starts and adds the marks rather than edges. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And who is next? I volunteer as a tribute. Before we start, trim the seam allowances on the bottom of the cups. Align the mid seams and match the cup edges with the notches. You can stitch and serge cups to the bodice. Stitch, trim and attach underwire channeling or stitch French seam. We'll start with French seam. Align seams, wrong sides together and pin. To prevent the pinching, to prevent, to prevent, to prevent the pinching, stitch from the body's side so you can stretch and smooth as you go. Oh yeah, from seventh attempt, oh my, oh my. 
cut the bodice at the notches so you can gracefully turn the cup around. Pin and stitch from the bodice side. And that's it! Mid seam aligned, cup attached. Well done! If you chose serging or channeling, pin right sides together and stitch. Serge or trim and cover with the underwire channeling. Baste. Stitch in the ditch. Oh, well, 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 you can't even see the stitches. Remove basting stitches. Top stitch using a blind stitch foot to secure the bottom of the channeling. And that's it. If desired, you can insert an underwire. With wire? No wire. It's your decision to make. I opt to leave it as it is. To attach the zipper, you need an invisible zipper foot. I start from the top and will sew a French seam. But you do you, boo. Baste one side to one layer only. Make a few small stitches in different directions next to the waistline to secure it in place. Mark at waistline for the cold mark X. Open the zipper till the very end and mark Z. Measure 5 cm up and mark Y. Baste open zipper to another side, matching the guidelines. Use an invisible zipper foot to stitch from the top to the mid mark Y. Waistline aligned, check. Swap to an all purpose foot. Start from the mark Y as close as possible to the zipper without catching it and stitch all the way down to the Z. And oh, don't forget to mark the notches. The zipper should stay out of the way. Trust me, you can do this. Oh, that's lovely. And now let's cut those notches deeper. In section YZ, fold the seam allowance right sides together and top stitch to secure the edges. Yes, yeah, something like that. Next section, from Z and all the way down. And as always, wrong sides together, stitch from notch to notch, trim, count in the notch, press and stitch. The exterior of the dress is simple, yet the flawless lines will take your breath away. Just like the interior. The enclosed seam that continues to rise to the top is interrupted by the naked zipper that will get dressed just in a minute. Press the bias binding almost in half. On the very top, the bias binding should be covered by the seam allowance. Bias binding goes on the zipper like so. Baste. Bear in mind the midsection YZ of the dress is free of binding. Stitch close to the edge. Remove the basting stitch. Cut a rectangle from the bias binding, fold and wrap around the bottom of the zipper so that all seams are covered. And stitch or baste and stitch. Hand stitch the bottom end of the zipper to the seam allowance to keep it laying down flat, as well as the zipper sides to the waistline as well as all other knots all around the waistline. Fold and mark that fold at the corners. Connect the dots. Use a store-bought bias binding or make your own. And place it the wrong side down at the guideline. Its ends should overlap the sides. Pin and stitch at the edge. Ta-da! Fold the bias binding over the edge and press. Trim the seam allowance and, if desired, the bias binding as well. I personally want mine as narrow as a mind of a racist. Fold and press. Fold and press again. Stitch on a sewing machine along the free edge or by hand so the right side doesn't show signs of abuse. So just pin and stitch. Cut the excess at the zipper. That's neat. Almost can't see the invisible stitches. That's the point. Pin the strap in the back at the comfortable length and stitch over a couple of times. Let's hem the edge and we are done. 
fold and stitch close to the edge. If it's hard for you to do, just fold a little bit more. You can trim the excess close to the stitching line after. Fold the hem over once more and stitch. Give it a good press and enjoy wearing your new dress made with love, blood and tears. But mostly love and a bit of blood. Excessive hand stitching. Thank you for being with me for... I have no idea how long, but thank you. I really appreciate that. And like and subscribe or else you will... Uh, you will stitch a long, long, long row just to realize you run out of the bobbin thread. <laughs> Trust me, you will. <laughs> okay, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Hopefully. Come back. Please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Bye.